Hey, 3D Basics students, you have made it to week nine. Uh, you're well over halfway through the semester, and you're even more than halfway through kind of the meat of this course. Today, we're going to talk about assignment five uh, first. We're going to talk about it first. I'll, th I'll show you just like a couple of little new things, but but otherwise, we're, we're mainly talking about assignment five. Now, before I get into it too much, um, Assignment five is sort of like putting putting it all together. We've we've covered quite a few things so far this semester, um, and it kind of maybe seems like we do one thing and then we move on, and then we do another thing and then we move on. And so now assignment five is kind of our opportunity to kind of revisit what we've talked about, try to put things together, and have something kind of nice, neat, tidy, complete, something that is. Uh, portfolio worthy for you. Um, so I would like to start by looking at the schedule real quick. Let me pull that up. Shuffling windows. Okay. Here we are looking at our course schedule. Uh, it is, it's week nine. Uh, we will have looked at your movie studio graphic in our zoom animation. Uh, Lecture, no, this this is not true. Actually, it is a letting part two and assignment five. Okay, <clears throat> assignment five. So next week, no class, spring break. Uh, the week after that is uh, is about modeling a character. This one, you know, is uh, I just kind of talk about sort of how it works in case this is something you're interested in doing down the road. Um, just note that um, in the modeling class, we do like actually kind of model a character together. Um, so this is just sort of kind of an intro into character modeling. Uh, and then the week after that, March 30th, is when your assignment five is due. The, the, uh, and the assignment five is, is diorama. So you've got um, three weeks to complete this. And it's not like it was with the spooky tree where like I pushed it back a week because of the snow day. Um, and you had another assignment to work on anyway, it's like, this is the only thing that you're working on for three weeks. Um, now, like I said, the, I want you to like spend a little bit more time on this one. This one has a little bit higher point value as well in terms of your grade. Um, and I also acknowledge that it's spring break, so you're probably kind of taking a little mental break from school, as you should. Um, but maybe all you do the first week is kind of generate some ideas, maybe look at some find some inspiration on the internets or elsewhere come up with some ideas and then uh, you start putting pen to paper here uh, week 11 and then uh, or sorry oh, it depends on how you how you actually enumerate the weeks but uh, maybe the following week you actually start um, putting things together okay so that's so just a reminder March 30th is when this one is due before we zoom we'll look at them together in class okay Let's talk about what this assignment even is. I think I need to go. I think I need to go. Whoa. Not that window. I think this window needs to go over here now. Okay. Assignment 5, diorama. Um, I think. Let's see. It's uh, 21 points. Create an orthographic diorama scene using everything you've learned this semester. Aim for this to be a portfolio-worthy project. It must contain at least five modeled elements, lighting, and materials. Here's an example from Polygon, by the way. Um, I linked it. I linked it here. Uh, but this is so. Th this is kind of like a, a popular thing for people to make uh, just for fun. I, I I don't know why everyone does this, but I like it, and I think it's. I think it's a. This is the first time I'm having doing this assignment in this class, so I'm kind of excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, but so the the prompt is pretty loose. Um, it's just sort of like make something in this style. So if we if we analyze this one a little bit, um, you can see that. Uh, so first of all, it's orthographic. So there's no perspective in the camera. And and uh, uh, the other thing with this particular one is that it's like it's pretty low poly. Like the the models aren't incredibly detailed. Like you know around the the goblet here, you can definitely see all the different faces. Same thing with these like urns or whatever. The character in here is like a very simple 
like kind of low poly character. And this is the style that this particular artist does. Um, but it's, it's, you know, it looks complete. It looks, oh, and I realize my face is in the way again. It looks like very polished and it just has like nice details. And when I say nice details, again, it doesn't mean like super high poly count, like lots of sculpting, lots of this and that. It's just sort of like small, simple, elegant bits like the rocks here. It's like, I bet if you looked at the mesh of this rock, you know, it's probably like 10 faces, you know. Um, but it's 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 all of these elements kind of work together and it's very cohesive. It's got um, a little bit of interesting lighting. We'll we'll talk about um, this a little bit. How you can see the light kind of shining through the window. I'll show you a way that you might be able to do that. Uh, and what else? What else? What else? And you know, just like you know, there's just a little candle and there's a little light glowing from the candle. And like also here's just a mysterious orange light from behind this clock that it doesn't. You, you probably would have noticed it if I hadn't pointed it out, but it's like, oh, yeah, where is this orange light coming from? I don't know. Um, and th there's not a lot of dead space either. It's sort of like, you know, there's just a little something in every every spot. So so this is one example. Also, if, if you just if you Google Blender diorama, you'll you image search, you'll uh, you'll get a bunch of results. So like some of these are like super cool. Like this one is like a very fancy underwater thing with. Um, alligators that you can see underwater but there's like here's like some simpler simpler things so this is like someone's office they just made like a little rendering of their office again like it's low poly yours doesn't have to be this low poly style you'll kind of find your own style as as you go through this this one is like the gate from jurassic park again like very blocky very like simple design but it's like elegant and it looks really nice there's a lot of nice elements in here you know, and just like small details. Small details doesn't not have to mean detailed details. What else? I, I really do kind of like, and like here's, this one just looks nice. It's a bridge over a river, no big deal. So what, what I'm wanting you to do is like come up with an idea of something that you could make as just like a little diorama, like a little one by one kind of just scene. It can be interior, it can be exterior, it can be a building. Like look at this one, this is a nice one. Um, it's just a little house with some windows and whatever. Uh, this is uh, Warcraft fans out there, the Dark Portal. So it could be something from media, something from fiction, something real. You know, it, it can really be, you can just do whatever you want. Here's somebody made like a little uh, recording studio here. Um, where was that pizza one? I thought it, there was like a cool pizza shop thing. Maybe I missed it. Oh, this and like this is my style too. Like I, I would want to make something like this. Some sort of like a uh, retro wave. I guess cyberpunk is is the uh, the term people use for it now. Um, but I, I like the neon lights and it's and it's like you know these buildings. How how complicated are these buildings? Not super complicated. So like th think on it a little bit. Do do some research. Uh, yeah, look at this one. It's like a uh, ancient ruins. This one's cool too. I like the glowing. Anyway, I just I just can't stop looking at these. Like, look at this one. This one's cool. I think like it's just got a little marble floor on there, just a little desks, but just like small details. They they found like an image of you know something and they put it on a TV here. Yeah, what is this one? I didn't expect to find so many when I just did an image search. And you can see that this one, this one is not low poly. This one is like a, a a much kind of higher fidelity situation. Oh, there was another one that caught my eye, but now I don't see it. Yeah, like this train station is cool. There was one more. Anyway, yeah, dragon, Mars colony. It just keeps going. Fuel station. A lot of these are polygon runway. I, I, that was the the, one, the example I showed you earlier. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, was that all I wanted to talk about? Yeah. Oh yeah, this this is the one that caught my eye before. This this like bedroom one. So this one is like super high detail, 
and they kind of went for photorealism. But the the thing that's that's cool about this is like it's a juxtaposition of the photorealism, yet it's the orthographic view where it's like very clear that this is not real. Um, because in, in real life, you could never actually have something be orthographic without perspective. Your eyes will always have perspective. Okay. So let's talk about this. Let's let's talk about how you would set up and start this. So first off, as I said, the first thing you should do is think about it. Come up with ideas. Look, you know, do an image search, a something search for uh, Blender diorama or whatever. Look at some cool things. And then, like, look at the world around you. What's something you would do? Or, like, are you watching a show that has a very iconic, like, place? Or, like, a favorite movie. Like, if your favorite movie is Jurassic Park and you want to do um, the Jurassic Park gate. or Obviously, you know, someone already did that. I'm not saying you shouldn't do an idea that somebody already did, but I would love to see some uh, some original original ideas. Okay, okay. How to, Just, like, how, first, let's start by setting this up. How would you set this up? Okay. Making sure I'm in the right spot here. Okay, so if... Oh, and I didn't turn on my keyboard shortcut. Okay, okay. So, um, let's hit, I'm gonna go zero on my number pad, if I can, clicking in Blender. Here we go, zero on my number pad. Okay, so this is our this is our camera view here. Uh, select your camera, and go to your object data properties, the little green one here. And lens type, we want to change that from perspective to orthographic. So you can see, hopefully you kind of remember me talking about this. It was probably week one, the difference between perspective and orthographic. But like orthographic is basically without perspective. Things that are farther away are the same size, appear to be the same size as they would be if they were up close. Okay, and then, uh, and so just like look at what's happened with our scene here. So, um, you know, our camera has got this like really wide look to it now. Um, it doesn't, it actually doesn't necessarily make a difference how close your camera is now because again, things that are close and far appear the same size. But I just, just for my own sanity, I like to have it, my camera a little bit further away. So I'm going to get my transform tool out, this one, move, and uh, I'm going to change this from global transform to local transform so uh, global transform is obviously like z is always z and y is always y and x is always x regardless of how you've rotated something the local transform orientations are based on the object itself so what i can do is i can just grab this blue one and like move it straight back and it's going to keep it at that perfect like 45 degree angle looking right at my cube so you can see if i hit zero on my number pad again it's <laughs> it, doesn't look like it's any different, but um, but now uh, with the orthographic, I guess what is? Let me hover over this scale. Uh, you can up the scale and kind of make things smaller like this. So just like kind of hold in your head what we were what we were doing. Um, and I should also say, I should, let me let me be clear. Just like do what feels good to you. <laughs> Obviously, like there's my prompt has. Like a couple of parameters, like you got like should, the, most of these are in an orthographic style, and um, you know you like make it a one by one square. But like if you if the spirit moves you to do something a little bit different than this, f totally fine. Um, w what I care about is I'm you putting something together that is portfolio worthy. And like using all of the different skills that we've talked about so far this semester. Um, that's the most important thing. And like, because you learn by doing. Um, and so I'm, I'm hoping that you're not feeling a lot of pressure that like, wow, some of those things Nolan showed me are like so, so good. And I am not good. You are good. <laughs> and, and by doing this, you will, you will get better. Um, and so I'm hoping that I'm not, I'm trying not to like, Put too much pressure on you because the things in that first example like the one with the, with the the what do you call it a vampire in the coffin it's like if you really look at it closely nothing there's nothing in there that you can't do yourself there's nothing in there that you can't model yourself it's all simple um shapes 
low poly, not a lot of like fancy dancy stuff. Um, it's just like the attention to the detail. And you can do that. It just takes time. Okay, I got a little bit off track. What? Where are we? Who am I? Okay, okay, okay. Um, so, the, so we've we've got our camera kind of where it needs to be. You you can you can maybe even like like lock your camera down, maybe. Can you can you lock it down? No. In some programs, you there's like a little lock that you can lock things. Locks lock. Okay, so there's there's my camera. So you may you may find it helpful to like actually change your like regular viewport settings to uh orthographic but honestly like i think that would throw me off i'm like because i'm so used to like modeling with perspective like this in the viewport i don't think i could toggle this 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 button here um but it's it's personal preference okay so i'm actually i'm just going to start with this default cube um and so okay let me pull let me pull up some examples again so like in a lot of these like this one. Let's look at this one, for example. It's like there's like a little kind of platform that it's on. Or even, you know, this one here. There's just like a little starting platform. Um, so I'm going to just use my default cube as, the, as this platform. So I'm going to go uh, SZ to scale down the Z. And then I'm going to go S Shift Z to kind of make it a little bigger like this. And just kind of check in with my scale. And that seems to be fine. Uh, then I'm also going to go Shift A and I'm going to add a plane and S scale this up. So this is gonna be, I'm gonna make sure to label things too. This plane is gonna be my ground and the cube is gonna be, I don't know, platform. Okay, platform, cool. And I don't know, maybe you can, maybe you can move it up a little bit just so you're being nice. Okay, the other thing, the other thing that um, just kind of stylistically is there's, there's usually kind of some light source coming from above so what's a good example here so like here in this one you can see that there's like a little bit of light shining from above a couple of different colors maybe i, I definitely encourage you to experiment with like um some colored lights so here you can see that like the background is kind of lit with this like blue and there's like a little bit of kind of orange in the front um so it's 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 not too complicated. Um, maybe I'll even switch over to uh, render viewport shading. So there is this our default light in here. Maybe maybe you're cool with that. I'm gonna turn switch from local transform back to global transform. And actually, uh, it doesn't even really matter because I don't use those transform transform tools. I'm gonna move this light back a little bit, back and up, and I'm gonna up the power to be like 3,000 or something like that. And kind of you can make this kind of like a blue a blue light or I don't know. Just just fiddle with it a little bit. Okay, um, so like the the other thing you can do, um, so so maybe maybe what you do here is um, you like create uh, actually create whoops control R I'm doing a loop cut you can you know make a little wall like this so it's truly like a, a diorama that's kind of like a little cutout and you can go three for face select and grab these ones and e extrude up like this so you've got you know your little room. Obviously, be careful that you're staying within your zone here. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe I can adjust my camera a little bit. Oops, camera. I'm still in edit mode. Object mode. Camera. Change my transform a little bit. Up the Y, up the Z location like this, maybe. And then maybe change my orthographic scale a little bit. And then you could, you know, have a, have a light in here or something like this. I don't know. I'm, maybe lighting isn't the best place to start, but up the power to a thousand or something like this. Maybe this is your kind of kind of yellowish light. GZ, move it up. I don't know. And then you've got you, you start building in here, whatever. Okay. Um, but the the reason I'm starting with lighting is because um, I want to show you I want to show you kind of one new thing about lighting um, that can be kind of cool. Okay, so uh, what I want to talk to you about is volumetric lighting, and um, I'm trying to find some example, but v volumetric lighting is just sort of like, it's lighting that you can see. Uh, obviously, you can like see the result of the lighting, but it's actually like, um, like imagine uh, like a really dusty room, and you can see kind of the rays of light shining through the window or something like that. Um, actually, oh, you know, the uh, this one. So like here, you can, 
uh, you can see the light shining through through the window. So how do we do that in Blender? Um, the good news is uh, this is something that actually uh, works in both the EV render engine and the Cycles render engine. So actually, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to edit this and um, I'm going to just create a, a window. So I'm going to I insert, whoops, not you, I insert faces and SZ, scale these down like this. Actually, I want it to be like kind of a small window like this. And GZ, move these up like this. I'm going to delete these faces and then I'm going to select these two edge loops. So two for edge selection. Select this and these on this side, holding down the shift key, I'm gonna select this, these four here, and then I'm gonna F, nope, not F. Oh, uh, what is it, uh, bridge edge loops. I guess there's not a keyboard shortcut for that. Okay, just so that there's like a little window going on here. Okay, and then uh, and then I want to, uh, I'm just gonna take this light here and kind of move it back behind it so there's light shining through the window like this. Okay, so um, we can see the light kind of hitting the wall here but what if we wanted you know like the rays of light shining through like it was it was a dark and dusty night so this this is definitely a stylistic thing that you can do a stylistic choice that can be made um it doesn't necessarily work for every situation but i i always think it's kind of cool okay so follow along with me uh shift a so we need we need a cube and um what, and our cube has to hold everything inside of it. Whoops, so I'm going to S scale and just like, I'm just going to make a gigantic cube that holds everything inside. Um, so now, now that we're like inside this world, you know, you can see that we're, you can see the walls of the cube out there. Sorry, I'm getting far from my mic. Um, now, uh, this cube needs to have a volume. So... To date, when, when we've put materials on things, uh, it's everything we've done has had a surface. So you're kind of putting something on the surface of it. But now we're, we're going to create a volume inside this cube. So it's kind of going to create stuff, dust, like density inside that the light is going to hit. So we're kind of we're creating just like noise, maybe, uh, that the light can hit inside this cube. Okay, so um, I've got to make sure I'm labeling things. Uh, so cube here, this is going to be called, this is our like volumetric lighting. Metric lighting is the name of this cube. Okay, we need to put a material on here. Add a new material like this. Th the, uh, the surface is going to be of nothing. It, it doesn't matter what the surface is. So you can actually click this surface and just say remove. So it's, it's not going to have a surface. Um, so you can see it actually like turns black like this. Uh, rather, it's going to have a volume. So like no surface. So surface is none. But volume, let's add a volume scatter to add that in. Okay. As you can see, it went dark. Um, and so a volume scatter is like it's going to kind of scatter volume <laughs> around the inside of this cube. Okay, density uh, is one. Um, so think back to my, my thing about like values in Blender. So one means d a density of 100%. So this is like 100% dense cube now. The volume inside the cube is dense. Um, so turn this way down. Let's, let's type in a value of 0.1. Aha! So you can see that now our, our lights are like shining and they have uh, density. <laughs> so like you can see that there's like kind of dust particles kind of around all of these things. Um, so there's, there's a, uh, if, we, if I click on my volumetric lighting cube here, um, the density is gonna kind of impact how far things are like how thick the fog is um, and it has to be a pretty low number. It's going to be like a 0.1 or less usually. Like if I go 0.05, you can see it kind of brightens up. 0.03. Um, anisotropy is a word that I have never bothered to learn how to pronounce. But it's sort of like um, it's like a another uh, measurement for like the thickness of things i i know that it's used for um 
liquids um, and other transparent things. And it has to do with like how the light refracts through it. So like um, water has a different anisotropy from glass. And like coffee has a different anisotropy than water. Like slightly, even though, because, you know, coffee is mostly water, but still. So um, you, it's one of those things that you can like kind of play with it. And it's, it's sort of like a, you can drag it around and just see the effect it has. Um, but I think zero is the default value, right? Or is it one is the default value? No, it's definitely zero. Okay, okay. So we're like starting to see the light shine through here. So maybe point one is a little bit more of what we want. Um, but also maybe like this point light isn't exactly what what we what we want to be working with here too because it's like it's shining everywhere so you kind of got to pick your battle so like maybe an area light is better or maybe a spotlight so maybe you go like shift a and actually same thing here too like maybe let me let me just let me start over with the lights here so let me go shift a let me add a spotlight cuz cuz if it's a point light the light is technically going to be like shining in the camera so you're going to see uh see the the like glow the, the volumetric lighting kind of coming at you so it may kind of fill up the your kind of viewport a little bit so maybe stay away from point lights when you're doing this uh or not you know just experiment with it so let's put in a new light uh let's do a spotlight and i'm going to g move this up here and kind of point it here and actually whoops not even close to where i wanted it point it down this way what who do you think you are I should do uh, orthographic views like this. So pointing this way and pointing this way, please. And pointing this way. Why is this so hard for me? No, down. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, power, 5,000. Ooh, not even. Not even a little bit. Why does it always go so far away? Here we go. Here we go. This is better. Up the radius. Um, up the spot size, maybe. Let's have it point down a little bit more. And more light? 10,000? Oops, that was one. 10,000. You know, make this, make this my kind of blue light like this. There you go. So that's kind of cool. Okay, okay. And then, uh, like, maybe maybe we do shift A. Maybe we do an area light. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, an area light here. Let's uh, G move it here. And RX 90. So it's pointing right. Oops. And do it the other way. RX minus 180. And GY move it here. Okay, let's up the brightness here. Um this is going to be of power 1000 and I sh want my shape to be a rectangle and I want my rectangle to be this big so it just shines right in the window there maybe maybe this is too much still or you can just like move it right up in there GY I just didn't want it like coming over the top so okay so here here's what you're seeing you're seeing um, the effects of EV. The EV is the inferior uh, light render engine. So if uh, if I were to switch over to cycles right now, so I'm in my render properties, I go from EV to cycles, and I'm going to switch my device from GPU to CPU, or sorry, other way around. Um, you can see that now it's going to be slower, but um, we're really going to get kind of the, the volumetric lighting that we want. And you can include things like um, emission materials as part of this too. So if I add in a uh, monkey, a Suzanne, and I add a material to Suzanne, and it's uh, changed the surface to an emission material, and you're going to be like a, a orange emitter. We'll let this kind of settle for a second, but. Um, you know, you we can get the the glowy the glowiness of it and the lightness of it 
happening altogether. And so, you know, it's it takes some finagling to get it exactly the way you want. Uh, but if I go to my volume properties here, you know, change the density. Oops, don't change the density that much. Point oh two or point two. What does that give us? Point two. See, so you can see like already point two is like super thick. So it's probably going to be point one or less. So maybe point oh seven. And change that. Try fiddling with the anisotropy too. Have things kind of travel further. Don't travel quite as far. So you know this is all this is all just style choice here. Um, you don't have to use cycles. You can switch it back to EV. And there's some cool things you can do with EV too, like um, like turn on bloom. So you can still have some like cool glowing emissions or uh, yeah, cool cool glowing uh, emission things as part of your scene. It's just not gonna like cast the, the light that you really want it to. Uh, anyway, okay, okay, so. The goal here is is to create something that's portfolio worthy. Um, so just like you can do it, <laughs> just get started. So here's here's my process. Here's I'll, I'll kind of start down the path of of how I would do this. Um, I probably won't spend more than than a few minutes on it, um, and. Uh, and you know you can take it or leave. Oops, you can take it or leave it. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, so I'm gonna start with my cube, uh, S Z and S Z like this, and I, sh I should probably check in with my the size of this here, and maybe I'll scale this all the way down, and I'll G Z move it up just a little bit. So the idea that kind of popped into my head is. Um, to make um, just like a, a building with like a neon sign. Oh man, hold on. A, a bit of inspiration just struck me. <laughs> there's there's a game that I was obsessed with when I was a kid, and it was called Shenmue, and uh, and there was an arcade that you could that you would run by sometimes, and it was it was called Game U. <laughs> uh, it was a Japanese game. Uh, good taste of grocery. Anyway, okay, I want to make a, a storefront that says Game U like that. Okay. Um, so, so my process is going to be just to like block things out. So, uh, whoops. So I'm just going to, I'm going to start throwing in cubes and, and we'll go to town on it. So actually I'm going to turn off my ground just for now. And, uh, we'll get, we'll get the, the shape of the building kind of, uh, right. I don't know. And like going back to my reference image, so this this is going to be my reference image. So like you know, it's pretty blocky, and it's got like you know just a few things on it, uh, but we'll we'll go with it. Okay. Um, so we've got let me minimize this. So we go gy. I'm gonna whoops sy, scale it out a little bit. And uh, okay, so let's tab to edit mode. So we've got um, like a little loop cut down the bottom here. This is gonna, there's like a little step out. E step out like this. And then going back here, there's, let's see. It's kind of a, it kind of comes out here as well. So I'm gonna do a loop cut here and then kind of extrude these these three faces out maybe. E extrude these, whoops. Uh, I gotta change my extrude. I want uh, extrude along normals, please. Pull those out just a little bit. Okay, and I've got a couple of windows here, so I'm gonna, whoops, undo that, right click. I'm gonna control R, we got two like this. And then maybe I'll, um, oops, man, what am I even doing? Three for face selects, like these two, actually I gotta go back and look at this a little bit. Yeah, maybe what I should do, I should, I should just eye insert faces here like this. And uh, I'll do Two for this edge select. I'm gonna do merge vertices. And I'm gonna GG move this down like that. Ah, no, that's not gonna work. I'll just GZ move that down. And uh, let's see, three for face select. I'm gonna e extrude. Whoops, e extrude in like this. Let's be a little doorway. Okay. 
See, look, I'm already, it's we're already almost there. Okay, uh, the next is the text. Uh, let's go shift A, um, add a text here. The first word is game, whoops, tab, delete that, game. Uh, tab, G, let's move this, RX90 and RZ90. I mean, that's a pretty good font for that. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go to my text properties. Let's geometry and let's extrude just a little bit like that. We don't even need to convert to a mesh. And let's make, uh, let's just S scale it up. It's gotta be, it's gotta be red, right? Let's add a, an emission, a new uh, base color. It's gonna be like a bright red like that. And it's gonna be an emission. So actually, I should have done that here for this game. Okay. Oh, I. Why do I always refuse? Whoops. I. I like wait to do orthographic views, and I should. I should just always do it at the beginning. Just do the orthographic view, dummy. Game. Um, yeah, we'll put it a little bit off center here, like this. Okay, new text. Next, uh, this is gonna be say you. Oops. Okay, I should have been looking at what I was doing. You. Okay, what color is game you? Uh, the U is purple, of course. Uh, RX ninety, RZ ninety. Okay. And uh, we'll extrude this a little bit. Geometry extrude a little like that. Add a material, new emission. And make this a nice little purpley. Up the strength a little bit. Go to your orthographic view. Okay. Let's see, we'll see what we're at for render, render preview. Yeah, game you. Okay, cool. <laughs> You guys, I, I just like am, am so pleased with myself. Game you. Okay, what else? What else? What else can we do? Um, you know, we can do we can do those like little neon signs. And you know, I think it would be good to have like a little light coming out of the window too. Okay. Obviously, I I could put um. Uh, I could put. A like concrete material on there, maybe uh, a later date I would. But let me I insert faces here like this. These are windows. Um, let me just let's add a new like uh, emission material on here as well, and uh, we'll just make it white like this and uh, assign it to those ones, right? Or is it going to do the whole thing? Oh yeah, the whole thing. Shoot. Okay, so hold on. Let's do a new material, and we'll just make this material. F six is going to be like a boring kind of gray material. That'll be our default material. So we go A and assign material six to all of them. And then I'm going to move this one down. Whoops. Move that one down. And then just select these two faces. And I want material five on those. So just like the windows like that. Okay. Just so that there's maybe some life on the inside. Okay. How are we doing? We'll be a little shorter on time tonight. Um, so then, then maybe I do like a new, I do a new cube like this, and I go um, scale this down, and maybe uh, as X, let me go back to like this because it's gonna drive me crazy. As X and as Y, is that about the the right size of these windows? Oh, almost perfect. That's why just a little bit more. It can overlap a little bit. Okay. What are those what does that thing look like? There's just like a couple of couple of lines that are Yeah. Okay. So I'll go tab and I'll go R for loop cut and I'll let me add a couple like this. So let's see, it was one, three, four, five maybe. Okay. 
and actually no 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 control R. I just want to I'm gonna add like a couple of custom loop cuts just one at a time down here like this. I'm I'm making the, the little places where it'll be neon. So there's gonna be two neon lines down there. Control R and neon line up here. And we just assign oops add a new boring material onto this. Yeah, what can be gray? That's fine. But then we're going to add another material on here, and this one's going to be like the neon red. Oops, so I got to do a mission red up the strength. I suppose I could have just grabbed the same red I used for the text, but that's fine. I'm being going fast, being lazy. Okay, so grab this one, this one, this one, and assign that. Oops, and assign this material to it. Yeah. So then. Up the strength here. So these are these are my that's my neon. My neon glowing signs. Is it doing anything? Yeah, kinda. It kinda looks right. Cool. So, you know, if I were to keep going, maybe I um in the in the game he has like a motorcycle and he parks his motorcycle out out front. So maybe maybe I'd try to model mo a motorcycle or just even just like kind of a basic car in front of it. Anyway, maybe I'll change my camera a little bit so I can see a little bit more. Okay, let me do a quick render. So, you know, you get you're gonna get out of this what you put into it. So take the time oh and now I just I just have to do this on the other side. Hold on. <laughs> Shift D, Y, move that in front of the other window. So you d you don't have to do the the volumetric lighting by any means. Um, it's just, it's kind of a style that I like, and I think it looks nice. Uh, you also don't have to do cycles, um, but what I want you to do is model a few things to kind of make a complete scene. Like maybe I would do. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I just want to keep going. I just can't stop. Okay, the uh, last thing I want to do is is like a light post. Okay, so let's do, uh, I'm just going to do a cube. Uh, no, G, move it over here. S, scale it way down. And S, Z, like this. And G, Z, move this up. That's too big. Let's scale this down. Use your orthographic, Nolan. Enough of this. Okay, here we go. And, uh, you know, just I'm just gonna shift A. I'm gonna add another cube like this, and period key is focus in on it. S Y. Set for my top down view. Just make sure it's lined up, and then maybe I'll uh, just to make it super. F let me. Okay, okay. Hold on. I'll just put I'll put a boring material in here like this. Okay. And then uh, I'm just going to get like a uh, a sphere and like hang it right in there. Hang it right underneath. Scale it down a little bit maybe. It's just going to be like a light bulb. Add a new like light bulb material on here. Make it a emission. I, I'm, I'm a fan of the like emission lights like this, especially when you're doing the volumetric lighting. This one thousand. Is it too much? It's maybe too much. Maybe I should just use the light. Maybe I okay. Don't do that. Delete this. <laughs> just make a light. Shift A. Uh, a light. I do a point light. I'm gonna like tuck it. I'm gonna tuck it into that thing. Turn down the radius so it's pretty small. And I'm going to tuck it in here so it doesn't shine up. Okay, let's see how this works. Uh, and power 1,500 watts. Ah, oh, but it didn't block it. Okay, hold on, hold on. Maybe I do want a... Maybe I do want a point light. Shift A. Point. 
So by default, they, they shine straight down. So I am just going to move it right there. NGZ. Oops, and I forget that you can just change the toggle like this. That makes more sense. Change the, put the, bring the radius down. How's this looking? Make this 500 watts. There we go. And up my spot size like this and change the blend, have a more blend like this and make it kind of a little bit more of an orangish light. Maybe the power is down a little bit. Okay, okay. <laughs> Easy. Okay, I do want the bigger radius just so it looks like it's a little bit bigger bulb there. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wait, am I doing a lecture? I like seriously forgot what I was doing for a second. Okay. Render image. What was I even talking about? Just, just like have fun. I want this to be a fun one. Like do something that excites you, um, and may it doesn't have to be anything too complicated. Remember, like all all you need is small details, some good lighting, and you can make something really cool. Um, and spend a little bit of extra time. Take the time to try to do it right. Um, yeah. I don't think I have anything else to say. I've t it's this is, it's a little shorter today, and it was mostly me just playing. So, um, enjoy your spring break, um, and uh, I, I'm really excited to see what you guys put together. Um, and just to kind of recap, make a diorama. I want to see five modeled objects. It can be five very simple things. In fact, I encourage you to do so something simple. I encourage you to do something achievable that you can finish within the, the given amount of time, and something that you're that you'd be proud of that you could that you could feature in your reel. Um, please, 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 please let me know if you have questions or uh, want to like bounce some ideas off of me. I'm, uh, I'm always eager to do that. Okay, uh, have a great spring break. Uh, we'll talk soon. So you want to, and I guess on a point of clarification, you won't have a lecture or anything due next week. Um, you'll have another lecture the following week, uh, but we will Zoom the week after that. So March 30th will be our next Zoom and also when Assignment 5 is due. Okay. Bye.